Hello everyone. In the first unit, you were asked to introduce yourselves and to define what sociology means to you. I asked you this question because we're going to examine medicine from a sociological perspective. So before we delve into sociology of medicine as a discipline, I wanted to explain a little how sociologists understand human behavior in society in general. This will help you make sense of how the sociological perspective can be employed to examine issues in medicine such as health, illness, and disease. As Peter Berger says, sociology is an invitation to look behind the scenes of the social world, a passport, as it were, to a different way of viewing life. As a field of study, sociology examines the role that social influences play in people's daily interaction and lives. The discovery of sociology can really challenge your outlook on life. It can help you understand the social forces that you confront daily as you go about your life. Sociology also opens our eyes for understanding the social context in which people live out their lives and for seeing how important that context, context is in determining what people are like. As sociologists, we explain the behavior and experiences of individuals and groups by referring to social factors. Therefore, the social world is an important place of focus for sociologists. Society is, com is a complex of human interactions with patterned regularities where the total is larger than the sum of its parts. So sociologists do not believe that human nature and individuality drive behavior. We as sociologists seek to contextualize human behavior and argue that it is largely shaped by a couple of factors that include social structure, which are more or less the stable patterns of people's interactions and relationships. An example of social structure would be a social institution such as family or education. Secondly, culture, which is a socially shared and learned ideas, beliefs, norms, and values. Thirdly, meaning. A sociologist would argue that an individual is an occupant of a status position in the social structure that is acting out social learned roles. Other factors that um, also shape human nature would be status, role, and norms. Status is your location in the social structure, who you are, gender, occupation, ethnicity, family. Your status, sociologists argue, can determine to a great extent your lifestyle and life chances. Role also could do this. A role is how occupants of the status are expected to act. According to sociologists, this is also learned. Lastly, another factor will be norms, which are socially shared and also guide our behavior. Sociological thinking invites us to think about the world we live in differently. A sociologist, as I mentioned before, is interested not only the, in the world of humans, but in the context in which they lead their lives. Sociologists thus contextualize everyday phenomena. To further explain this, I want to offer some examples that a sociologist might study and examine. The first is the idea that many people have, some people I would say, um, hopefully it's an outdated idea, is that women should stay at home to raise babies because of their quote-unquote maternal instinct. A sociological explanation of this would be that there are many socially learned traits and behaviors associated with what is expected out of men and women in our society. And that this idea is also um, contingent and is also historically is changing as more women are entering the labor force and actually men are um, staying at home to take care of children. Another example would be poverty. An individualistic explanation of poverty would be that poor people are lazy and they come from broken families or they cannot budget their money. A sociological perspective on poverty would examine the structure of inequality and social class in our society. Lastly, take illness. Becoming ill is about biology, susceptibility, and freely chosen lifestyle. A sociological perspective would argue that mortality and morbid morbidity are also influenced by socioeconomic factors. Health and illness are products of social forces relative to time, place, and conditions. In this class, we're going to explore how medicine is much more social in nature than one might be, led to be, might be led to believe. Social and economic factors, as we're going to see, have an effect on the origins of disease, the diagnosis, experiences of illness, and the way medical work is carried out. An example of this may be patterns of disease and death rates. For example, with this in mind, we could seek to explain the differentiated mortality rates between developed and developing countries. Today, when we look at the leading causes of death in the world, it is largely heart disease, stroke, or lower respiratory infections that dominate. Um, this is related to multiple risk factors and not a single germ. Thus, lifestyle, social, and environmental factors are still important today in terms of dictating health and illness. 
Having defined sociology as a scientific study of society and recurring aspects of human behavior, I now want to turn to the reading you did in the unit number one on um, Phil Brown's essay, Themes in Medical Sociology, which provided you with an overview of it, the field, its historical roots, and its present contributions. Lastly, in the third part of this lecture, I want to address the reading for this week, Unit 2, which is a shorter version of a much longer article which appeared initially in the Journal of Health and Social Behavior. I want to explore more at length the social construction of diagnosis, illness, and disease, which, as Brown notes, is a key theme in medical sociology.